sway. 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 In the morning. In the morning. In the morning. Shake your body. Wake your fuck ass up. With Kelly Kincaid, uh, we do this weekly to help you, uh, give you information that can help you improve your life, mind, body, spirit, and soul. Yes, we're here to educate you. Good morning, Sway. Good morning, citizens. You know, today on first aid, we were listening all afternoon, and it was confirmed that sitcom ap- sitcom actor Tommy Ford passed away. That's right, Tracy. You brought that up earlier. Yeah, and Celebrity Wire, really unfortunate, really random, but um, it was said that he had an aneurysm that ended up rupturing his abdomen and that's what put him on life support. And he was initially hospitalized on Sunday. And even for myself, you know, I don't say the word aneurysm a lot. So I had to even make sure I was pronouncing it correctly. It's just one of those those things we don't have enough information about. Correct, correct. And you know, I got a lot of tweets and people were hitting me asking about what is an aneurysm. Mm -hmm. And I had to call our resident doctor, Dr. Ronnie Whitfield, AKA the hip hop doc to kind of educate us and give us some more information. Good morning, Dr. Whitfield. Hey, Doc. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, guys. Thanks so much for having me. I wish it was on better conditions, man. This is this is a major blow. Major blow at 52. At 52. And, you know, yeah. the first question is, what is an aneurysm? Well, let's let's define, first of all, the an artery is, uh, the, the, the aorta is the largest artery in our body, and it, it delivers blood from the heart, oxygenated, oxygenated blood from the heart into the lower extremities, upper extremities throughout the entire body. So our aorta, again, the largest blood vessel in the body is almost the size of a, of a uh, water hose. Uh, if the walls of the artery start to weaken, they will start to balloon out. And so it looks like a balloon. If you can see, you can actually see arteries, some, uh, arteries dilating or ballooning on x-rays, and that's sometimes how they're found because in many people they don't have symptoms. Mm-hmm. So it, it's a ballooning or weakening of the arteries, and it starts to dilate and balloon, and the vessel uh, the blood flow in that vessel increases pressure, and eventually those, like my old man used to tell me, pressure bust pipes. That pressure continues to increase. The blood flow is continues to increase across that dilated area or that weakened area. They can pop right. or rupture or burst, and I think that's what they're saying happened to Tommy. But I think, Kelly, you and I mentioned earlier that I, I went on his page, and I saw he had recently had a knee, knee, replacement. knee replacement. So I was thinking, mm-hmm. yeah, I thought there might have been some post-op complications from the knee replacement surgery, which are, you know, like blood clots that can break off, go to the heart, cause um, um, either aneurysms or something called a pulmonary embolus. So exactly. wasn't quite sure what happened, but um, just wow, devastating. I grew up on on Martin, man. It's, this we is, all this did. Rough blow. Uh, yeah. I thought aneurysms are usually happened up in the brain. Well, I wanted to. That was the next question, Doctor Whitfield. Okay. The types of aneurysms, because is it there are three? Because Tommy three main types, right? But, you can have an aneurysm in any any blood vessel in the body, but okay. the, the main types uh, you have brain sway. You write about that. There's there's the aortic aneurysms, and they're divided into thoracic aorta, which is in the chest, and abdominal aorta, which is in the, in the lower abdomen. But you can also have them in the lower extremities of the blank, uh, of the lower of the leg. I have a patient with what we call a popliteal artery aneurysm. That's in the back of the knee. So anywhere there's a blood vessel, and anywhere that blood vessel can be weakened, uh, you can actually have an aneurysm. But the most common that you're going to hear about brain. The, the, the chest or the, or the abdomen or the stomach. Okay, we have Dr. Whitfield here, the, the hip-hop doc. Um, we got Hector on the line from Arizona. So we're going to take your calls, 888-742-3345. Hector, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing uh, great. How are you guys? Good to be on Sway. I'm a big fan. listen all the time. Oh, man. Hey, man, that, that officially makes you a citizen. <laughs> Hold up. There it is. I'm Sway in the morning. It's official. Um, so... Have you had experiences with aneurysms or a family, a friend, a, a, a friend or family member? Oh uh, yeah, actually, I've had two aneurysms myself. I had, uh, wow. I had one in my back, in my uh, lower back, and uh, it was just random. One day, I was standing in my kitchen. I felt something burst, and I started having swelling in my back, and it was just all the blood filling up. My back expanded. And I was able to get that repaired, and then uh, most recently in January, I actually had an aneurysm in my stomach. I had a rupture of the inferior mesenteric artery. Wow. And it was um, dumb luck for me because I was in the hospital for a different reason. I was going to get discharged the next day, and then all of a sudden, I sat up out of my bed, looked at my wife, said, I think I'm dying, and collapsed. Oh my, oh my God! What did you feel like for people who don't know what the symptoms are? How how did it take over your body? Like what exactly were you feeling at the time? Uh, a lot of 
just pain and pressure, and then I don't remember anything else. After that, I uh, they had to do an MRI, realize that I had a rupture, and then they performed surgery and put me in a coma for seven days. What, how, what did they advise you to do once you were um, well enough to leave the hospital? How can you manage this, Doc? Um, maybe you could chime in on that. How can you, once you had an aneurysm, how can you manage it? Well, in his case, obviously it was it was that's a life threatening situation, uh, Hector. So you were you you. you I'm amazed that you're still around because most people don't get to the doctors in time. If it happens at home or happens even in a timing situation, they probably didn't know what was going on, so it took them a while to figure out what was happening. So they're checking blood counts and blood pressures, and your pulse, your heart rate's way up because now blood is escaping into the abdomen or to the chest, wherever their aneurysm is, is ruptured. So they're trying to figure out why you're losing blood, so it can take some time to figure it out. Uh, but once you do find it, you have to uh, surgically manage it. Now, there are instances of aneurysm in the abdomen are less than 5.5 centimeters, and they know based on history that once they get a little larger than that, they're, they're more likely to rupture. They can actually conservatively watch these. They can do ultrasounds repeatedly three to six, every three to six months, CT scans, you know, make sure that you're not having any symptoms. But usually when people present with pain uh, or, or it starts compressing other structures, so the other thing that can happen is they, they get so large they press on surrounding structures so they can cause pain if they're in the, in the throat. They can cause hoarseness or inability to swallow or decreased ability to swallow. So... In most cases, guys, they don't have symptoms and they just they just rupture. The only true screening is to be done is individuals over the age of 65 if they have had a family history. So we don't actually screen for aneurysm. You just look for them on physical examinations. How do you know, how do you know, Doctor Whitfield? And maybe we, when we come back, you can answer that for us. Okay. Is is it sim- You said you don't know, but how? How if how in pressure? How would you know? Maybe I'm having an aneurysm. You know. Right. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that yeah. up next, and then we're gonna take more of your calls. Eight 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 seven four two three three four five. Hector, thank you for thank sharing you. your story, man. You are blessed. Um, today uh, we're talking about aneurysms. We're talking about aneurysms, and we have our resident doctor, Doctor Ronnie Whitfield, aka the Hip Hop Doctor. You know, off air I was just saying you're so knowledgeable about it, and when you were explaining what the arteries and aneurysm was, I really could understand it better because it, it feels better because when you're just googling the definition it's just kind of like okay um i'm not getting a visual so thank you for explaining and talking about this a little bit further we got um we got adrian on the line uh from north carolina uh, and before we go to adrian is uh aneurysm so it really doesn't matter your age it's Typically, it's where you, you you see them as you get older, but you can you can have uh, you can have congenital aneurysms. You can be born with aneurysms, so they can occur at any age. But typically, we see aneurysms as we get older. Two of the main risk factors were actually three: elevated cholesterol, smoking, and hypertension increase that risk. So again, if you continue to smoke, you have high blood pressure, which is putting strain and stress on those arteries over time. All those things increase the risk. So, you know, if you have hypertension at a young age, you can see that aneurysm at a younger age. So now, what we used to be treated as adults, I'm treating folks with. In you know young adulthood or even childhood, you got patients on cholesterol medicines, diabetic med- medications, and younger ages now. So, so how can you avoid cholesterol? What are ways you could avoid cholesterol? And then when you in, in, in high cholesterol, and when you smoke, are you thinking does it matter? Because a lot of folks smoke marijuana. So does that matter? Well, I'm gonna go to that real quickly on marijuana. Marijuana tends to not cause these problems because it's not dose it's dose dependent. So most brothers that I know that smoke weed, not including myself, <clears throat> uh, only smoke one or two joints a day, Sway. So, you know, they're not smoking a pack of, a pack of cigarettes a day. Y'all, what y'all laughing at? I was just saying, oh, no. So, <laughs> but no, it's interesting that you say that because many people that think that marijuana and, and, and weed, we need to have a separate show on that. I'll tell you about that later, but a weed or smoking weed tends not to cause the things that you would think they cause because it's a dose dependent effect because most people you know are not smoking you know 20 cigarettes a day for 40 years and then end up with type, all different types of cancer I so see. with right. weed smoking that's not the issue you know doctor and dr whitfield um i wanted to just um have you answer the question as well what are their symptoms how do you know like when to go to the doctor if you're feeling that pressure that it may be an aneurysm well, unfortunately, in most patients, there are no symptoms until it ruptures. So mm-hmm. you have to have a high index of clinical suspicion. I do I do physical exams on young people. So they're thin in most cases, and when you're pressing on their abdomen, you can feel this pulsating aorta in their abdomen. You can actually feel it. When you get older, you got a little more weight on you, or if you're obese, it's hard to actually feel that. So the only recommended screening that had been 
that we were doing were individuals over the age of 65 that were smokers and that probably had a family history of some type of aneurysm. So there's no really recommended screening. So in Thomas' case, I, I'm still baffled. I mean, he was in the hospital when it happened. You know, again, I, the first thing I thought, uh, and Kelly, you and I talked about, I thought he had, you know, maybe blood clot that broke off and went to his right. brain or something. He could have had a stroke. But um, there are really no symptoms. If you do, there's going to be either that some people feel the pulsating mass if they're thin enough or close to the navel, a constant pain in the stomach, you know, that's possible, or even back pain. Uh-huh. In the thoracic aorta, it can radiate to the middle of the chest. You think you're having like a rip roaring, something going, like it could, be, could present like really, really bad heartburn that won't go away. But in most cases, Sway or Kelly, you just don't know. You don't know. So I'm going to go through. We have a slew of callers here. I'm going to go through as many as possible. So sure. we'll, yes, they'll, they'll ask quick questions, and hopefully we could, we could get um, quick answers. All right. Uh, we got um, Jimmy from San Jose on the line. Jimmy, good morning. Good morning. How you doing? Doing great. Say hello to Dr. Whitfield, and what's your question? Um, I actually did have a question. I just I just had a kind of comment I made to want, want to make to people out there to remain optimistic. Um, the thing I want to say is I work at a medical device company called Penumbra that makes medical devices for uh, what you guys are talking about, which is actually like a hemorrhagic stroke. Um, there there are options, technologies that people don't even know about, don't talk about these days, but you can actually get coils that can fill these aneurysms uh, that'll that'll uh, in, essentially make your body naturally kind of heal that off and. Uh, these are some things that people can think about. You know, there's devices to remove other types of strokes, so just kind of remain optimistic. There's people out here in the Bay Area. We're in Alameda, California, working hard every day to, you know, save these people's lives. Okay, what's the name of the company you work for? Uh, Penumbra, Inc. We're in Alameda, California. Okay, uh, and so have you heard of these type devices, Dr. Whitfield? Yeah, and, and he's talking more and, and you know about strokes. So there are there's another company, Medtronic. They have these devices that can remove blood clots. Uh, and when we talk about aneurysms, they have coils that they can put. Because how they repair these things is they actually clamp off above and below the actual um, areas that's bulging, and they they cut into the the artery and they put a coil inside that artery and sew that that tissue right back over it. It's pretty amazing what they can do. And mm-hmm. so now you have restored blood flow. It's kind of like just repairing a hose pipe. And so that's the kind of thing. So yeah, they have to some new stuff. Some of it's not clinically uh, uh, been researched fully, but there are some really cool new d- new devices coming out that will be saving folks' lives. Jimmy, thank you for uh, for that information. Adrian's on the line from North Carolina. What up, Adrian? Adrian. What's up, guys? Love What's the up? show, man. Uh, I just had a quick question. You guys actually answered a few of the questions earlier, but uh, my mother had a brain aneurysm about 10 years ago, and uh, it's, I just wanted to know, is it hereditary? Um, you know, ever since it happened, it's kind of caused me a little bit of anxiety because I'm always wondering in the back of my mind, you know, is this something that could happen to me? So uh, I guess it I just want to know, is that be. something that's hereditary, and, and is that something yeah. that I need to worry about? Yeah, they can be, especially if you're having headaches, visual changes. Uh, I don't know how old you are, but, I, you know, the, the key to this whole thing is seeing your doctor on a regular basis. And like Sister right. Tyson once told me in a media interview, Dr. Whitfield, when things start falling Wait, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Did you just name drop? Who who told you that? <laughs> no. <laughs> did you say Cicely <laughs> Tyson? Yeah, I did. It was oh, prophetic. Wow. Oh, it was just... prophetic. <laughs> I, and I'm not name dropping because she, she schooled me. She said, when things start falling off on your doctor, we feel go get it checked out. And it was so prophetic because most people know something's wrong and know something's different, and they still won't go to the doctor. So the key to that is establishing care with a physician that you trust and, and presenting and telling them everything. I mean, that's what we're here for. So you talk and tell them what's wrong, and that's the way we can find stuff. But there are some congenital brain aneurysms and one of them look a group of them called berry aneurysms so i definitely would, would see a doc man and just just let him know what's going on and it may not be anything more than a conversation but at least you'll be in tune with somebody that can help you all right, hey, right. adrian thanks for your call you are officially a citizen the way in the morning my man nigel is in nebraska <laughs> go ahead uh, nigel what you like to say no, i was just wondering about the aneurysm i mean i used to work in the or so i know i used to deal with a lot of patients from triple a Triple aortic bypass to, um, you know, we we had emergency brain surgeries, et cetera, et cetera. So I know I know the feeling and I know how it goes down in the OR when it comes to those things. Yeah, yeah. When you say triple A sway, that's what they call a triple A abdom- abdominal aortic aneurysm. So that's kind of our mnemonic form. Okay. Hey, thanks. Th- thanks for that, Nigel. Um, man, he's actually in the operating room. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna take one last call and I'm gonna send everybody. Um, um, to you directly if they have okay. if they have questions uh, uh, for you. Okay. And uh, Shanita is on the line from Iowa. What up, Shanita? How you doing? I'm doing fine. Go ahead. Um, I just had like a couple questions because 
you know, I've been going back and forth to the doctor, and I've been having, like, dizziness. And, like, um, a lot of times I have to sit down. It seems like the room is spinning. Sometimes I get a little hot, but not really. Um, they put me on some medication. They're only trying me out for 30 days. But I do go back to the doctor at the end of this month. And that's just always been my concern. Like, do I have this? Because I've been getting these really, really bad migraine headaches. Okay. Have you ever been imaged? Have you had anything, MRI, CT scans? Has that been done? They just recently did an EKG because they were worried about my um, blood pressure. I was recently on some okay. cholesterol medicine, but they took me off right. of that. But nothing on the brain? No, and that was, um, when I go back on the 28th, that was um, what I was going to get to with them because I wanted them to really thoroughly check. And look, you're doing it right. You educate your physician. Sometimes docs have egos about, you know, tests and patients telling them stuff, and if they get insulted by that, then move on. But you know your body better than the doctor, and what I mean by that, you know how you're feeling. So if things aren't mm-hmm. going that right direction, then, you know, take, and I always take a notebook, take notes, what they, whatever they tell you, make sure you record your own vital signs, write them down. And if you're not happy with the care you're getting, you got to move on because you only got one life, so you got to take care of Correct. it. So uh, I, would, I would encourage, sound like you're doing the right things, you're staying on top of it, and you're moving forward. Okay. Hey Shanita, we're about to give out his information, and you can hit him up directly. But you're officially a yep. ci- you're a citizen. Well, Sway in the morning. Thank you for sharing that story, um, Doc. Before we give out your information, you're doing a special challenge right now, too, right? Uh, yeah. You want to talk about that, man? I see you doing push-ups on your Instagram. Man. I didn't know if you were trying to get sexy. <laughs> okay, I was like, man, before you come, okay. come, come, yeah, a buddy of mine challenged me to the 22, 22 push-up challenge. Uh, there's a Sim syndrome, post-traumatic stress disorder, and the study has been controversial, but we know more one or more a day is too many, but uh, veterans have taken their lives. They say 22 a day as a result of PTSD. So I've been doing a 22 push-up day challenge I've done. Last night I had video difficulties, so I ended up doing 66, a brother's chest is sore, and I worked out this morning. But it's a great thing to do, so I'm encouraging the citizens of Sway to jump in, and, and I'm challenging all of you guys, including Sway and Kelly Kincaid, to get down and do at least 22 push-ups each night for 30 days to raise awareness about PTSD and the veterans that have lost their lives to this preventable disease if we could get them treated. And, and how can people reach you to let, so they could tag you and let you know they're actually doing the challenge? I'm at, at the hip hop doc, T H A hip hop doc. Uh, of course, you can always go to Kelly Kincaid's page. He posted a picture of us today, and, and I'm hashtagged on there as well. And and and, um, and Sway is as well because Sway go post me up on his page. I appreciate you, Sway. Thanks so much. Yeah, man. Twenty two, huh? <laughs> All right. So, um, the hip hop doc, D O C. Yes. Okay. The hip hop yes, doc. And if you have any questions, because we had a lot of callers about aneurysms and otherwise, man, hit this dude up directly. He works with us. He's a part of our family, and he'll Absolutely. answer you and put you in the right direction. When a lot of yes, doctors sir. will send you an invoice, all he's going to do is <laughs> say, he's just going to send you some advice, all right? <laughs> you, know, you know that. You know that life, huh? All right, Doc. Yes, hey, man, thank you for coming. Thank you so Damn, much. Thank you. And then Kelly Kincaid. Good morning. You too. too. And um, if they want to reach you, they can. Reach me on all yes. socials Kelly Kincaid, K E L L Y K I N K A I D. Thank you. It's Sway in the morning. Only from Shade 45.